Hello, Auburn staff. This is Jeff Gardner with a video on our most current threat assessment protocol. Back in October, um, October 27th, 28th, I went through a training with a gentleman who represents the Kaiser Salem protocol. Um, this has been around since uh, since just a little bit after the Columbine shooting. Um, they've uh, continued to update the process. They've continued to unfortunately learn from you know the the many shootings public shootings school shootings that have taken place since that time so anyway i'm gonna go ahead and get rid of my camera here and get you to focus on the, on the screen uh we really haven't had to use this protocol until just recently this past week you guys know you read the email i sent out um, thanking um, staff members for really paying attention to our students uh I can't say that on a large enough scale. Uh, I was debriefing with uh, the superintendent and a couple other people from the cabinet um, after we'd kind of gone through it. And uh, John Arstead, who pretty much led us through the first time we had to go through it, uh, basically said that our teachers at Auburn High, because of the things you guys are doing with capturing kids' hearts, because of the things you guys are doing to you know, just do the dipstick check on your kids daily, greeting them at the door, checking on them, doing good things. Probably had a lot to do with this. Uh, usually it's one teacher that comes forward with information, you know, in these situations. In this case, it was half of the students' teachers. So, so good for you. Um, and I know when I've talked to each one of you, you've kind of said, well, the student was just telling you about these things. Well, students say a lot of things and it's really up to the student to really confide on what type of level of information they're willing to give them. So um, what may have been a cry for help um, could have very well been a very uh, tough situation. So I just want to thank you for that. Keep doing what you're doing and uh, we'll move along here. So this next slide uh, is pretty is pretty involved, as you guys can see. It's, it's more of a flow chart. Um, the things I want you to be thinking of um, around the school are um, you see the little explosion uh, logo right there, uh, act or threat of violence, including implied threats. Uh, that's, that's kind of where things can start, okay? You may, as a classroom teacher, see some things in their writing. You may see things in their artwork or drawings or on their backpacks or their binders. Not that you have to be continually searching around for those kind of stuff, but you know, just keep your eyes open when you guys are doing the quick writes or journal writing or or just the interactions. Just, you know, listen to your spider senses. If you're noticing something is a little bit different, um, a little bit off the student's baseline, um, and it's really subtle, not a bad idea to bounce it off of somebody, okay? Because especially if the student has that same, per same person as the teacher you're bouncing it off of. Um, if you do feel like something needs to be looked in, the very first place you go is the school counselor, okay? So make sure you check with the alpha counselor, let them know what you're feeling, and uh, that's for if it's something that you feel it's implied. Obviously, if it's something that's escalating really quick, you want to get to administration security as fast as you can, okay? But we're just talking about those things that we're just not 100% sure about, or the student might be telling you some things uh, through writing, verbal, or whatever. Um, if we see there's an imminent danger, if you work down that flow chart, uh, we're going to initiate a protective response, okay? And that's calling that um, emergency number, the 907777 number. Get that going right away. If for whatever reason somebody doesn't pick up, send a if you know if it's safe, send a student down to the main office to let them know you're trying to call in, okay? Or even if you have one of the administrator's phone numbers, just call them, okay? But don't just um, try one time and not start again. And I'm talking about an imminent danger type situation. Okay, let's move the flow chart over to the right. But before we do that, if you look at the top of the slide, you're gonna see that um, the school counselors are kind of the main point of contact. They will reach out to John Arstead if they feel like, based on our, our protocol, if they've got something um, that's more concrete, okay? We're also gonna loop in our safety resource officer Going to loop in myself or one of the assistants if I'm not here. Um, if the student does have an IEP, we're going to loop in a case manager, uh, parent guardians, of course, and then other concerned adults. Now, in the one we just had, the student was also a participant, mainly because he was conveying everything that 
he conveyed the teachers. So I guess in a way they're part of this team too, if they're willing to cooperate. Um, in that orange box, second level, we don't even go there. Okay, that's for later if we need to go there. And that's really what the assessment team needs to decide. So we've put this team together. Um, more than likely it's gonna involve a counselor, or well, it will. Um, sometimes it's gonna involve John Arstead, Jessica Smith, myself, IEP case manager, if we can reach a parent or guardian, they're gonna be part of this too. Um, and we gotta be a little bit strategic about that piece too, which I'm not gonna get into, but that's one of the things we've been trained to do. Okay, so if we see there's no imminent danger, we gather the team together and we go through our protocols. We have a packet, um, several packets actually. There's some smaller ones that we get input from teachers, staff members, concerned adults. There's a packet we'll use in an interview with a parent or guardian, obviously the student himself or herself. Um, if there is a victim, okay, maybe it's uh, maybe it, it looks more like a HIB situation, harassment, intimidation, bullying, and threats are made. We're definitely going to be talking to the witness because we have to let any potential victim or victims know that they've been maybe targeted. Um, that's something we have to always do and let them know for their own safety. You know, if we don't see it, there's a threat assessment needed, we're going to consider it our uh, multi-tiered systems of support here at the high school. If we do have to go through the full assessment, which we did on the last one, or the one we've done so far, we meet, we determine a risk, and we determine plan of actions. We've put together a safety plan for the student's return. The student is now receiving mental health care, um, totally 100% cooperative as parents are on board. And I think that situation has gone really well. Um, and then at that point, you just kind of follow the flow chart and we just continue to monitor the student. We know the student's gonna have a safety plan. We know that when he starts his second semester classes, the new teachers will be brought in on that safety plan. And once he's done with his uh, mental health assessment, therapy, uh, he and his parent have already decided they're gonna share everything with the counselor. So if there's anything else we need to add to that or take away from that, we're going to do that. So. Anyway, that's kind of the, the way that works. If we do have to get to a second level, you can see the people in the orange box, the people we were involved there, John Arstead. Um, so you can see he's already at least been contacted on level one. He'll also be level two. Pretty sure he'll be leading that. Uh, Ashley Boyd, who's our coordinator for all prevention and intervention here in the district. She also went through the training. Uh, any one of our SROs, uh, we like to count on Jessica, but sometimes she gets called into duty. So we would lean on Luke or Ryan. Uh, we would work with community health providers, uh, mental health providers such as Sound Health. And then um, uh, we'd work with CPS or other agencies. Along with that, we could always confer with Puget Sound ESD. And uh, we know all the people that are involved with threat assessments there. So we, I think we have a pretty good relationship with all the people who we would need to kind of band together and, and figure things out. Okay, the next slide um, is just a bunch of documents. These are all related to level one threat assessing, okay? There's a document here that kind of reminds us of the sequence we need to go through. There's a guide. Uh, there's a, a dismissal of a level one threat document. So if we decide it is not going on to a level one threat, we need to document that. And then the level one protocol, Okay, that's a kind of a longer document. That's the one that level one I would be in charge of or the administrator would be in charge of. And then the last four have more to do with just interviewing people. So, or having people fill out information for us. So that's, that's kind of the process. That's kind of the pieces that go into the process. When we do get into this mode of a level one assessment mode, all of our work, SRO, principal, counselor, um, to a degree, the IEP case manager, all of our other work stops. All the priority goes to this particular effort. So just know that um, we do prioritize this. And even though you don't get to see the work we're doing, um, sometimes it could look a little bit piecemeal. Sometimes we could just be locked in a room, uh, kind of working on all this together. But basically our day to days kind of come to an end. Um, the last, the one we did do this year, uh, it took about a day and a half and it's going, it went on to almost two days and we're still working on it um, in terms of the safety plan and the student returning to school. So um, to kind of ease your fears, what I can tell you is the student is good with everybody in the building. Um, absolutely feels good about his teachers. And uh, for the most part, students, there's no one person in the building he's upset with or anything like that. 
it's, it was more of a cry for help. So we were able to get the support he needs and uh, we will move forward. So anyway, that's kind of it in a nutshell. Sorry, this droned on a little bit. I was hoping to make it under five minutes and I don't think I did that, but now you know. Um, so right now, your main, your main touch point would be eminent danger, administration, implied danger, counselor, okay? All right, have a great day, you guys.